Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 9 of the chapter Alcohols, Phenols and Ethers. Moving ahead with our discussion of the previous two videos where we were talking about the preparation methods of preparation of alcohols, I told you that alcohols can be prepared from alkenes in the next video that is in part 8. In part 7 I told you how alcohols are prepared from alkenes. In part 8 we talked about how alcohols are prepared from carbonyl compounds. In this video we are going to talk about how alcohols are prepared from Grignard reagents. I'll take you back to chapter 10 where we talked about Grignard reagents. As you already know, Grignard reagents are organometallic compounds. They are alkyl, vinyl, allyl, or aryl, magnesium, halides. So they are organometallic compounds which are magnesium halides of an alkyl, allyl, aryl, or vinyl group. So these Grignard reagents, if you really look at what how they are, you studied them in chapter 10. CH3, CH2, Br, when it reacts with magnesium in the presence of dry ether, we know it results in the formation of a Grignard reagent. The Grignard reagent in this case is ethyl magnesium bromide. Right? Now, if you look at this, the Grignard reagent, this Grignard reagent, it has carbon joined with magnesium with a covalent bond. Do you notice this? It is an essentially covalent bond and this covalent bond is highly polar. Why? Because the electronegativity difference between carbon and magnesium is very high. So it's a highly polar covalent bond but the bond between magnesium and brom bromine that is essentially ionic in nature because they are a um, strong metal with a strong non-metal. So the bond between them is essentially ionic. That's why we call it an organometallic compound, a compound that has both covalent and ionic bonds in it. So all these bonds are covalent. The bond between magnesium and carbon, you would expect it to be ionic, but that is also covalent, but it is highly polar, tending towards ionic, but highly polar yet covalent. But the bond between magnesium and bromine is essentially ionic. We also know about ionic compounds that they are highly reactive because anything that is charged is charged to act also. So they are highly reactive. So these are such highly reactive compounds that even in the presence of water, amines or alcohols, even the presence of these compounds like water, amines and alcohols, even they are acidic enough, sufficiently acidic to convert them into their corresponding hydrocarbons. So all the Grignard reagents, if they come in the presence of water or in the presence of amines or alcohols, water, amines and alcohols also act as acids which can break them down and give you back the original hydrocarbon. So our MGX, that is the any Grignard reagent, where alkyl, aryl, vinyl, allyl group, it could be, R could be anything, RMGX plus H2O would give you RH. The water molecule breaks down into H positive, OH negative. So the positive part combines with R, resulting in the formation of the hydrocarbon, corresponding hydrocarbon, and the OH gets connected to magnesium and the halide. So you get MgOHX. So, alcohols are also produced using these Grignard reagents. This part is what you have already studied in Chapter 10. We just had to revise a little bit about Grignard's reagents. Now, we prepare alcohols from Grignard's reagents and how is that done? You can prepare alcohols from Grignard's reagents when Grignard reagents react with either aldehydes or ketones. Both aldehydes and ketones, when they react with Grignard's reagents, they yield alcohols. How does this reaction take place? Let us understand the general reaction and see the steps. Whether it is aldehyde, the simplest aldehyde is HCHO, and a ketone, where one of the hydrogens will be uh, substituted by an alkyl group. They have a carbonyl group in them. Both aldehydes and ketones have a C double bond O. 
So we have to focus. The reaction actually takes place where the C double bond O is present. So both aldehydes and ketones, depending on what is present here, you, it'll be an aldehyde or a ketone. So aldehydes and ketones both would give this reaction. So in the case of ketones, you may have both alkyl groups and or aryl groups or whatever. And in the case of aldehydes, you may have both hydrogens or one alkyl group. When they react with Grignard reagent, what happens in the first step? A nucleophilic addition of Grignard reagent takes place to the carbonyl compound. Nucleophilic means that it is attracted to the nucleus. Nucleus is positively charged. So a nucleophilic addition takes place to, of Grignard reagent takes place to the carbonyl compound. The double bond O, you know the pi electrons are always the loose ones. So that is where it breaks. RMGX, the magnesium, it has, as I told you, there's a great difference between the electronegativities of carbon and magnesium. So whichever carbon the magnesium is attached to, magnesium has a tendency to lose electrons. So you see this, the electrons, it has a tendency to move the electrons away from it. When it loses its electron to R, R comes and gets attached to carbon here. So the R which is given away from magnesium, magnesium loses its electron, gives it to R, that is the alkyl group, and the alkyl group comes and gets attached to the carbon here. At the same time, this oxygen, it, the double bond which is present here, which breaks, both the electrons of the second bond, that is the pi electrons, move to oxygen, making it negatively charged, right? Both the electrons of the double bond move to oxygen, making it negatively charged. And R, which has gained the electron from magnesium, it goes and attaches, uses those two electrons, which it has got from this bond with magnesium, and attaches itself to carbon. While the two electrons of this bond, they move to oxygen, making it negatively charged. And magnesium, in comparison, is Magnesium is positively charged because it has already given its electron to R which has moved away. So Mg is positive, so O negative gets attached to Mg positive and the bond next to it with halogen, uh, with the halogen also is already uh, essentially ionic as I told you, that is also present there. But here we see that O negative and Mg positive, they get attached. As you know, this is a halogen and this is an essentially uh, ionic uh, bond. Magnesium has a charge of plus two and halogens have a charge of negative one. So the other negative one <coughs> is balanced out by oxygen. So you get, but since we ignored this part, that's not the part that is participating here. So we see what are the changes occurring here. The R acquires a negative charge by getting the electron from magnesium, gets attached to the carbon. At the same time, carbon cannot have so many electrons around it. So the pi electrons move to oxygen, making it negatively charged. So the negatively charged oxygen gets attached to the positively charged magnesium and the rest of the compound remains the same. This is an adduct that is formed. Adduct means the product that is formed as a result of addition. So it is a nucleophilic addition that has taken place. So it is, you get an adduct, but this adduct is not stable. It further breaks down. So what happens? How does it break? It breaks in the presence of water. Water causes the hydrolysis of this adduct. I told you, even in the presence of water, a Grignard reagent can break down. It causes the hydrolysis of the Grignard reagent to give you the corresponding hydrocarbon. But in this case, one step has already occurred where oxygen has been added to the equation. So now, when we do not expose this to water until the adduct has been formed. Once the adduct has been formed, we add water and when we add water, the water causes the hydrolysis of this adduct. When it causes hydro Hydro means water, lysis means breaking. So the water molecule breaks this molecule into two parts. But to do that, water also breaks into two parts, that is H positive and OH negative. So when this breaks, where is it going to break? It is going to break between oxygen and magnesium. So the, in water molecule, H is positive and OH is negative. 
the H which is positive comes and gets attached in a covalent bond now to form OH that is alcohol. The R where it was it remains where it is so everything remains where it is. Only the break of the bond, the breaking of the compound takes place. Mm, yeah, The compound breaks here. Right? And here H positive from water you have H positive and OH negative. H positive connects itself here and the OH negative connects itself there. So you get R, everything is the same, R comes here, O, H, and we do not show the signs, the positives and the negatives now, and Mg gets O, H, and it already has the halogen. So you get Mg, O, H, X. So this is the reaction that takes place. So if we took, as I told you, that this reaction, you get alcohols from carbonyl compounds, which are aldehydes and ketones. So let's take the example of these aldehydes and ketones and see what is the, and carry out this reaction and see what happens. HCHO. HCHO, I would like you to, since it's a carbonyl compound, I would like you to see it as uh, the C double bond O, one is H and this is also H, right? HCHO, I can write it like this, RMGX, it is RMGX, the bond here breaks, R becomes negatively charged, it will come and get attached here, so you'll get, uh, let me just wipe this off and write it here. So you have H, C, double bond, O, H. I should take a black pen. It will be darker. The tendency of a blue pen is to be lighter. So let me rewrite it, please. H, C, double bond, O, H. Okay, plus R, M, G, X. The bond here this becomes negatively charged so what happens in the first step you get the adduct so what is the adduct that you will get you will have H C look it is the same reaction that I'm writing only now I have fillers for this these two vacant spots H and H the double bond becomes a single bond and this becomes O negative MG positive and X right this is the adduct that is formed in the next step, what happens to the adduct? I'm writing it here. You imagine this to have, uh, we are continuing the equation here. The adduct now adds on water and hydrolysis takes place. And when hydrolysis takes place, you get H, H, the compound remains as such, C, C, and O, H, right? So it becomes H, C, or CH2, O, H, in short. It is CH2OH. What is CH2OH? It is methanol. Sorry, there should be an R here. <laughs> Surprising. Yeah, it's not CH2OH. Here you get the R. So CH2OH is not methanol. H and R. So R CH2 OH would be an alcohol and here RCH2OH plus MgOHx is the same product that you get. Is it clear? Look at the first equation now. If you had methanol, methanol is an aldehyde, the first aldehyde, it reacts with RMGA to give you R, CH2, R, R, CH2, O, M, G, X, which on hydrolysis gives you R, CH2, O, H, plus M, G, O, H, X. Now this alcohol that is formed, in this, the O, H is attached to the terminal carbon, therefore this is a primary alcohol. Pay attention here, it's a one degree alcohol, right? In the second example, we have RCHO. It is a, an aldehyde, but an aldehyde where it is not methanol, it is some other aldehyde. 
So it is RCHO. What changes in the reaction? Just this R. Everything else remains the same. So you'll get R C H R O H. Right? That is what you would get. Yeah. So what has happened here, if you see, instead of both the hydrogens, this is an aldehyde other than methanol. So you have an alkyl group here, and this is another alkyl group. Did we use an R dash in this case? Yes. So let us say that this R is a dash. The dash is only to show you the difference between the, the two alkyl groups. They may be the same, they may be different. So we put an R, R dash just to make it look a little different. And this is the reaction that takes place. Again, the reaction is basically the same. You are just doing the same thing. So if you understand this, you can always, whatever be the aldehyde, whatever be the ketone, you will always be able to find out what is your product in the end or what is the adduct in the middle. So here you get R, C double bond, OH, R dash. R dash comes and attaches to the carbon here. R and H remain as such. O negative, MGX, you get the adduct. Then hydrolysis of this takes place. And when this, the hydrolysis of this takes place, R, C, H, R dash is here. OH is the alcohol that you got and MGOHX. Here, the alcoholic group is attached to a carbon, which is attached to two other carbon atoms because both of these are alkyl groups. So it is attached to a carbon, which is further attached to two other carbon atoms, which means it is a secondary alcohol. So whenever Grignard reagent reacts with methanol, you get a primary alcohol. But whenever Grignard reagent reacts with a any other aldehyde, sorry, when it reacts with uh, methanol, yeah, you get a primary alcohol. But whenever Grignard reagent reacts with any other aldehyde, you always get a secondary alcohol. And you know, you don't have to memorize this. If you just know this mechanism, you and you, in, during your exam, even if you write it down, you would know whether you're getting a primary alcohol, secondary alcohol, or a tertiary alcohol, depending on what you have. So in the next example, we are going to be getting a tertiary alcohol. So what are we going to take? Instead of taking aldehydes, we now take a ketone. So R, C, O, R. What is a ketone? A ketone is nothing but this carbon, instead of both hydrogens, if they were both hydrogens, it was methanol, it, it was one alkyl group, it was any other aldehyde. If both of them are alkyl groups, then it is a ketone. R, C, O, R. Right? So the same thing is happening now. If this is R dash, both of these are R's, then this hydrogen is also R. Reaction is the same. This is also R. And you've got an alcohol. So look at the reaction here. RCOR with R dash MGX. So both of these are R's, which means both of these are the same alkyl group. They could have been different. If that was the case, you would have written R, C, O, R dash, and this would have been R double dash, just to say that these alkyl groups can be different. So the ketone is R, C, O, R, and this is R dash, so you get C, R, R from the ketone, and R dash is coming from the R dash, M, G, X. Then oxygen will come here as O negative, M, G, X will come next to it, O negative, M, G, X, then when it breaks down, the hydrolysis takes place. And when hydrolysis takes place, you get R and R. R and R, both of them that you've got from the ketone. And R, C, O, R plus R dash, M, G, X. The, both the R's are from the ketone. And the R dash is from the Grignard's reagent. So R, R dash, R are present here. And since here, the alcoholic group is attached to a carbon, which is attached to three other carbon atoms, it is a tertiary alcohol, right? So with methanol, you will get a primary alcohol, secondary alcohol with other aldehydes, and tertiary alcohols with ketones. 
So that is basically how you prepare alcohols from Grignard reagents. So with this, I will wind up this video. There is uh, an example uh, that I'll be doing in the next video and then we'll be moving on to the preparation of alcohols. So with this, I'll finish this video. If you wish to watch other videos of this uh, chapter, please click the link that appears on top of the uh, video. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.